Today, on Commitment to Truth. We are restored when we just allow the Good Shepherd full access to everything, everyone, everything that makes you who you are, everything that makes me who I am, right? Every person that you're concerned about, every situation of your past, your present, your future, allowing him to ultimately rule and govern it completely. Welcome to Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Each week, Pastor Cedric Brown and the pastoral team at Commitment Church strive to draw you into a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here is Pastor Cedric, lead pastor of Commitment Church, with today's message. If you could open your Bibles to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. We're going to read our short part of the text that is jam-packed with tons of application. And it's this. The Lord is my shepherd. Honestly, we can just pack our Bibles, go home, (laughs) and just let that resonate in all of our hearts. The truth and the fact and the promise that he is our shepherd. Amen? Now but I can't just make it that easy for you or me or even myself. So the definition of the word shepherd here is defined this way. He's our ruler, teacher, companion, and our special friend. He's our ruler. He's our teacher. He's our companion. And he's our special friend. So this is what I want to give you today. So from this definition, it is clear, first of all, that we are restored when the good shepherd is allowed to rule every area of our lives. Not holding back pieces and parcels of it, but that we are restored when we just allow the good shepherd full access to everything, everyone, everything that makes you who you are, everything that makes me who I am, Right, Every person that you're concerned about, every situation of your past, your present, your future, allowing him to ultimately rule and govern it completely, non-negotiably. Those things that trouble you, those things that excite you, those things you know that's coming, those things you don't know is coming. Let him be the ruler of it all. Psalm 95, verses 6 and 7 describes how the Lord rules as maker and God. Listen to what it says. It says, come, let's worship and bow down. Right there, it communicates what? His sovereignty, his rule. Right? You don't just bow down in anyone's presence, but someone of what? Great authority. Come, let's worship and bow down. Let's kneel before the Lord our maker. So listen, we can never get it twisted that even though he's our shepherd, even though he's our ruler, teacher, companion, and he's our special friend, he's our maker. Which says that guess what? He can erase what he's drawn on the paper at any moment. And history proves that he can. Matter of fact, the future re-revelations communicate that he will, unfortunately, again. He is maker and creator, which again, it's nothing to panic about, but it's like, okay, well, he's maker, so let me, as his creation, rest in who and how he has made me. And I think a lot of people need to rest in that and be restored in that truth is that God made you, he made you, and he still says, as he says in Genesis, it's very good. Even as you age and you start losing some some hair, <laughs> your eyes grow dim, he's still maker. You know, maybe one of your eyes is a little higher than the other, your eyebrows are not, you know, whatever, right? Whatever imperfection, he's made you and he says, no, you're good. Amen. You're good. He's your maker. He says, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Today, if you just hear his voice, 
and do not harden your hearts. Hear his voice. Don't harden your heart towards him as ruler. Because truth be told, when we harden our hearts, history shows he breaks to get to the soft parts of our hearts. He disciplines those he loves, right? He says to prove that you're not illegitimate children, that you really belong to him. Amen? Let him rule every area of your life. And then we're restored when he's respected as our teacher. John 10, 27 and 28 describes how we as sheep should listen and follow and, and also his benefits as we just respect him as teacher. In other words, everything that he teaches, we should follow. We shouldn't try to change it, to adapt it to our insecurities and, you know, our trepidations. But it says, my sheep listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. Here's the benefit. And I give them what? Eternal life. They never perish. And no one will snatch you out of my hand. Eternal life. You never perish. And by the way, no one can snatch you out of his hands, period. He's our teacher. So we have to embrace all of his teaching because all of his teaching describes all of this to us. It describes eternity. It describes eternal life. It describes how he cares for us and he shepherds us and he envelops us. Amen? So let him rule every, every area of your life. Let him be your teacher and follow every bit of his teacher found in the, teachings found in the text. And lastly... We're restored when he's known as our companion and our special friend. So think about that. I mean, just the, the radical transition. Wait a minute. He's my ruler. <laughs> he's my maker. He's my God. Oh, he's, he's my teacher, and I should submit to every part of his teaching. Oh, by the way, I'm your companion and your special friend. To me, that just shows this, the vastness of God's wisdom and care and love as our shepherd. Is that, listen, we're not going to get it confused or twisted. It's like a parent, right? Hey, don't forget, I'm still mama. I'm still daddy. We can get close and have fun and, you know, do cool things together and laugh and joke and play, but I'm still mama. I'm still daddy. And to me, that's the beauty of, of the fatherhood and the, and the, the uh, good shepherd's character is that, no, listen, we can enjoy life together. And you can call on me anytime you want. There's nothing, there's no veil separating you and I. There's nothing that separates you from me or me from you. And we can be close friends. But don't forget Still in charge. But, but knowing that he's still in charge, we can't get all convoluted to realize that no, he wants to be close to you. And he died, was buried and rose again for that privilege. And that's why John chapter 10 verses 14 through 16 describes the companionship of the good shepherd. It says this, I am the good shepherd and I know my own again. It says, and my own knows me. Just as a father knows me and I know the father. Think about that. Jesus is saying this intimacy that he has with the father is also available to us and him. And he says, I lay down my life for the sheep, which then leads to John 15, 13 through 14, which echoes the sentiments of John 10, which says, greater love has no one than this, that a person will lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you just do what I command. Again, it just, clo it just clearly shows this companionship and this special friendship that's available with the sheep 
with their shepherd. And then Isaiah 40, verse 11, defines this, how special we are to the good shepherd. It says, like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. Now listen to the details of, this, of the words. It says, in his arms, he will gather the lambs and carry them in a fold of his robe. You hear that? He will carry us in the fold of his robe. He will gently lead the nursing use. Do you, do you see that part of God? Do you see that part of the shepherd that he, he offers to us? Is that, yes, please understand that I must rule and govern every area of your life, your heart, your desires, your home, your passions, your privileges, everything that makes you who you are, I must govern it. I must rule it. You must give me complete access. And you must follow everything that I teach you. But in the midst of it all, know that I'm your friend. Isn't that great to know? So let's close with this. And we're going to do this every time again through this series. We're going to pray the three areas that we learned. So can you pray right now where you're seated? Just, Lord, we surrender to you as our Lord. And it should be on the screen. Lord, we surrender to you as our Lord. Can you first pray that right now? Lord, we confess today that it's very, very difficult to surrender to you as Lord and ruler and maker and governor of our lives. But today, we start by saying, Lord, forgive us because there's areas in our lives that we still try to rule, still try to control, keep to ourselves. But today, we acknowledge this and we also ask for your help and the wisdom that is necessary to allow you to rule. Rule our past, rule our present, rule our future. Rule and govern our emotions, our intellect, our resources, our families, things that concern us and trouble us and keep us up at night things that excite us. God, everything and everyone that makes us who we are, we pray today that you're a rule. We release it to you today. Now, secondly, can we accept him as teacher, but not only him as teacher, but all of his teachings that is found in the scripture. Can you pray that? Lord, we accept you as teacher and all of your teachings from scripture. Lord, again, we ask for your forgiveness for those times that we just don't want to listen to you. Sometimes because it's hard, sometimes because it's inconvenient. Forgive us. But Lord, we recognize that there is safety in you because there may be a way that seems right unto a man, but its end is destruction. But today we pray that your word your teachings will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. That we will acknowledge you in all of our ways and you will make our pathway straight. Teach us. Lead us based upon the authority of your word. And then lastly, we want to fully experience you as our companion and our special friend. Remember, Jesus says that he's a friend that sticks closer to us than any brother. But can you pray this, that you long and desire to fully experience him as your companion and as your special friend. Thank you again for listening to our latest sermon series, From Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. If you want to listen to the previous messages in this series, or if you want to hear messages from other series, 
visit Commitment Church on YouTube or Pastor Cedric Brown on Spotify, Pandora, or other podcast providers. You can also visit us on our website, commitmentchurch.org. And if you live in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey area, we would love to see you in person as well. You can attend any of our services by visiting us at 2 Berlin Road South, Lindenwald, New Jersey, 08021. Thank you again for listening, and have a blessed and wonderful day.